Hello everyone, welcome to lecture week five. From this week, we're going to dive into the differential calculus. So we're going to know about how to perform differentiation, what is the limit, and specifically in this class, we're going to talk about uh, introduction of the limits and its properties, the rate of change, how to find the limits in the common com functions we covered earlier, and also the uh, what is infinite limits uh, and the limits at infinity. So let's dive in. Right. So here are some properties of the uh, the limits. Um, just run through quickly uh, what we have in terms of the the common properties, and most of them are quite intuitive. So the first one, if we if the function is a constant, then if we take a limit, it's gonna stay as itself. So it's a constant as well. Um, if the function itself is a, a linear function, then because the function itself is continuous, which we're going to talk about later, so if the function is continuous, then the limit is just the evaluation of this function at this specific point, which is when x is equal to c. Um, so when we write uh, x, uh, there's an error, write error, c, this means that x approaches c. Um, uh, in, in this case, so, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, if we are at a line, the, this is the x, and then this is point c. So approaching c action means can be approaching from the left, right, uh, from the left to right, or from the left to the left, to the left. Uh, so this is what we mean by approaching. Uh, so this includes both cases, and the assumption is that uh, when x approaches c, there's a the value which is l. Uh, for function f and m for function g. So that's our general assumption. So if we plug that in and look at the uh, the third uh, property, then uh, the the limit of a sum of two functions, there's a sum, if we are taking the limit, then it's actually equal to the sum of both uh, limits, right? So we can take the limit of f, take the limit of l, uh, g, and then the, this becomes the l plus m, which is uh, very intuitive. We just plugging the limit uh, operations. This is a limit oper operator. And then uh, apply in both functions. Uh, this goes for property four, the malice. And uh, like everything else, if we time the function by the, the constant k, then we can move k outside, right? we move it outside. And then it comes uh, evaluating the, the limit of f at x equals to c. Right, so when x approaches c, and then the re result becomes k times l. So we can easily move the constant uh, multiplier outside the limit operation. Uh, similarly, we can uh, we can uh, distribute the limit uh, to each function uh, in the multiplication, so that it's actually becoming the multiplication of two uh, limits, uh, which becomes l and m. And this uh, the same goes for uh, the uh, division as well, right? So when we take the the uh, the root uh, of a function, then we can also move the uh, operator of a taking the limit inside the the function and then evaluate. So get at, so, so evaluate f of x at its limit first to get l, and then apply the uh, taking the root uh, of of l uh, to the uh, to the nth uh, to the nth root. Um, so these are just some general properties, and we uh, so we show a list of examples which are in general quite intuitive. Right. So let's move on. Uh, let's look at how to compute these uh, limits. Just do a bit of uh, exercise. Um, so here in the first case, we know that um, so, so we know that when x when x approaches one, right, as x approaches one, this will become one right so it's uh it's will become one and this also become one so because we're taking the absolute value then it's actually meaning that because uh we're approaching one then x x will actually approach uh, x because it's going to be positive which is also approaching one so uh, in this case this term is going to be limit x approaching one x x that means one so one is also equal to one over one Right. Um, so that's uh, actually uh, in, in the intuitive case. 
the second case takes a bit more uh, caution. So we look at the denominator, which is uh, x minus 2. And if x approaches 2, then we need to pay extra attention because this is going to be approaching 0. That if we're dividing something by 0, uh, that's where we need to pay extra attention. Um, so in this case, if that's the case, right, if the denominator is going to be approaching zero, then what we need to do is to actually apply some uh, 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 symbolic manipulation so that they try to look at if the form can be simplified. So we know that x uh, squared minus 2 can be decomposed in a way uh, that maybe the other common factor can cancel out. So you can say x plus 2. Uh, x minus 2, right? So you can verify yourself if this uh, equal to uh, x squared minus 2. And then the denominator will have x uh, minus 2. Then in this case, these two terms can cancel out. So this way, what we uh, mean by canceling out the common factor in the denominator and the denominator, now we have uh, x still approaches to x plus 2, right? So now things become very easy. We just plug in x equals to 2, then we can get the result, which is 4. Right, the third case, because uh, we already learned that the first thing to take note of is the denominator. So since the denominator will not be zero when x equals to three, then we can easily plug the uh, uh, x equals to three, the value inside the, the form. So now we have uh, nine minus four divided by uh, three minus two, then we have five. Right, so the main takeaway is that when we are computing the limits, the first thing to take note of would be the denominator. Right. Um, okay, so now uh, let's move on. Okay, so, so we have more practices. Now, uh, just a few uh, properties on, on the polynomial function and on the rational function. So we know that uh, the polynomial function is going to be continuous uh, within this domain. Uh, if it's continuous, then we can easily plug the value of x to c in the function itself. So that will get f of c uh, uh, as the value of the limit. For rational function, because there's this denominator, so we need to check if the denominator is zero. And if it's not zero, then we can easily plug that in to get uh, uh, r of c. Right, so this is the general rule of thumb. And uh, let's uh, look at a few examples. So for example, uh, we know that it's just uh, the uh, the uh, street plugging and evaluation. So we know uh, this can be two cube times five times two, uh, minus five times two minus one, which gives us minus three, right? So can, uh, you can do the verification uh, uh, yourself. Uh, then uh, we have the uh, the second case, which is uh, when x evaluates to uh, approaches negative one. All right. So by uh, the the one of the properties we just mentioned, if there's a, a limit, take the limit operation, then we can actually plug that in the function first, do the evaluation, then do the square root. Right. So we can do that. Uh, Taking the limit of x approaching negative one. Now we have two x squared plus three, right? So then we can do the evaluation internally, right? So it's gonna be two times one plus three, then our net result will be uh, the root square of uh, f of five, right? So so that's uh, that's the uh, the second case. Let's look at the third case. So the third case, because now that we, this involves a denominator, which will not be zero, uh, when x approaches 4, then we just plug in. Right, so 2 times 4, 3 times 4 plus 1, which is going to be 8 over 13. Right. So this is just uh, some simple practices. All right. So let's move on. Uh, now, this uh, picture summarizes what we've uh, been uh, 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 discussing so far. So if we are looking at a rational function, right? So rational meaning there's a, a nominator, a, numer a, a numerator, which is a polynomial function. There's a denominator, right? It's also a, a, a polynomial function. And uh, the question is, will the denominator become zero or not? So if it's not zero, then we can safely plug in the value of x, right? So this is just a, a plug-in. And then it naturally becomes fc 
over g of c, right? Uh, assuming they are actually a uh, uh, f and g are polynomials. Um, so if it's zero, then there are actually two cases. So we need to focus on f uh, uh, in this case. So assuming f, uh, assuming g is already zero, right? Um, if f is not zero, when we are evaluating at uh, as uh, x equals to c, then the limits will not exist, right? So we will not, not exist. So it's, it's saying that we are dividing something by a uh, zero, right? So it uh, does not really uh, exist. So in this case, uh, the limit will not exist. And uh, uh, the net result of such divisions will be uh, positive or negative infinity, right? Because uh, uh, we are dividing by zero. Now, if f, of x or simply f of c equals to zero, right? Uh, it applies to both cases, uh, this one, this one. So if the numerator is zero, then we have this so-called indeterminate form, right? indeterminate form, which is uh, just zero divided by zero. So how do we deal with that, right? Uh, so in this case, the limit may or may not exist. Uh, this requires some uh, further uh, uh, algebraic manipulation, which we talked about uh, just now. So if we if there's a way to simplify the form and then allows us to find the limit, then that'd be very good. If it, but this does not guarantee the simplification always works. So we need to see uh, if it exists. So that's that requires further investigation, right? So uh, a bit of. Uh, 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 reiteration on the indeterminate form. So if uh, we have this form, uh, rational function, and it is uh, indeterminate if uh, if both are zero, right? So so zero divided by zero is so called the indeterminate form. Um, and uh, this is the the second case we'll talk about. So if uh, f uh, approaches l, uh, right, when x equals to c and l is not zero. Right, it's not an indeterminate form. However, denominator g is zero, then we have this uh, uh, this uh, form where the limit does not exist. Right. Uh, now this uh, concerns the the uh, the third case we just talked about. So, how do we evaluate the limit of a uh, indeterminate form? Right. So just remember this is what we mean by simplification. So uh, if there's a simpler form which allows us to, to decompose the numerator and denominator to something like this. So the, the, this is our new form. And now we can easily cancel them out just like uh, what we did earlier. And then uh, we have this uh, new form here. So hopefully the new form is easier in terms of computing, computing the limit. Uh, so this is just one example. Here we do the simplification of the uh, by factoring out uh, the, the the two factors here, and then we can divide the uh, cancel out the factor of x minus two. So we have this, and then uh, it's, this allows us to evaluate uh, the the form, which becomes four. Uh, this value is not possible to be to to to, to get if we just work on the original form directly. Right, because if we just plug in directly, then this becomes zero divided by zero. Right, how do we know uh, it exists or not exist? So, so the main takeaway is that when we know that it's gonna be an indeterminate form, right? So try uh, simplify the form. If it does not uh, work, then uh, so if you can simplify, then uh, we can just plug in and then uh, uh, see if it uh, uh, exists. Uh, so if it exists, then we can evaluate easily. If it does not exist, then it may become uh, uh, the the the, uh, the form where uh, the so so the numerator is going to be some constant c, and then the denominator is going to be zero. Then this means it does not exist. So so there are only two possible scenarios: whether it exists or not exist. So this is just a diagram in terms of how we can possibly navigate the analysis, the calculation. Uh, however, uh, you do not need to remember this. So what's uh, needs, what's important is that uh, something that needs to draw your attention to. So especially what's uh, uh, X is approaching and when it approaches this value, what happens to the denominator, right? So if, uh, so depending on the, the, the value of the denominator, you know uh, how to proceed next. All right, 
So we have some more exercise just to re reinforce. Now the first case, uh, we need to evaluate if the uh, if it is an indeterminate form, and uh, if it is, then we need to find the limit or uh, explain why it does not exist. Right, put two possible scenarios. So first one, uh, we can just say when we plug in uh, x equals to one, right, it's becoming uh, zero right, in the numerator, and divided by two, so it's going to be zero. Right. So it's uh, just a simply plugging. So in this case, the limit exists and is uh, zero. And it is not a denominator form. Right. So uh, not in the term, it just uh, dots, in the form. Right. Um, okay. So the second case. Now, when we plug in x equals to uh, one, we know that the nominator, numerator will become zero and the denominator will also become zero. So that's a typical case, case of uh, indeterminate form. Uh, in this case, what do we do? Now we try the simplification. So we know that this uh, portion can be, uh, can, be, uh, can be translated into another form, right? which we can uh, proceed by factoring uh, into x plus one, times x minus one, right? So now it's obvious that we can cancel these two terms out. So it becomes still x approaches one, uh, one over x plus one, right? And this naturally becomes one over two, right? So in this case, uh, we it is an indeterminate form. However, the limit exists. Uh, let's look at the third case. So we know that uh, when x approaches one, this one will approaches two this one will approach zero. So it's gonna be, uh, so it's gonna be a uh, two over zero. And uh, in this case, uh, the limits will not exist, right? So it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a not indeterminate form, not in determinate form, because it's not zero by zero divided by zero. And uh, the limit does not exist, right? Because we are dividing two by zero. So it does not exist. All right. So, uh, okay. So one more point. Well, what is the difference quotient? So the difference quotient is very much related to uh, the the concept of the limit. So suppose we have uh, so we have x and f of x, right? And I have two two points. Uh, the first point is uh, when x equals to a, right? Then f equals to f of a, right? When x equals to a plus h, uh, h could be any constant. It could be very small, could be very big, right? And then our value of f becomes f of a plus h. So we just plug in, right? So the difference would be, uh, we can just take the difference of both term, of both sides. So the numerator becomes the difference of f. And then because it's a quotient, we're going to divide by the difference of x itself, right? So this becomes a plus h, then this becomes uh, simply h. So h represents the sort of the distance between these two points, right? Uh, now, the scenario is that what if we take the limit, right? So we take the limit of uh, uh, h goes to zero, right? So the distance between these two points uh, becomes zero. Then what happens? Right. So this is what we call uh, take the limits uh, of the difference quotient. Right. So it has a special meaning, which I'm going to talk about uh, more more later. Right. Uh, but uh, just a heads up. So this is going to be the slope of the uh, of the function or the, the derivative of the function uh, as x equals to a. Right. So so we're going to talk about more uh, later. Now, um, so of course. If this guy approaches zero, then we're dividing zero by zero, which is an uh, indeterminate form, right? Um, so now let's uh, look at one practice. So we're, we're told to evaluate the limit for this function. Uh, so so how do we, do we evaluate? Let me erase this. Okay, so the evaluation can be quite straightforward. So we can just simply plug in the the the, uh, the value of uh, 
of uh, different terms and then see what it looks like. So in this case, uh, we can just say it's gonna be the limit still h goes to zero. Then we have uh, three, three uh, uh, plus h. So four times three plus h minus five. This is the first portion minus. All right, so this is, uh, let me add a square bracket. So this is another uh, uh, evaluation, four times three minus five, and then we have the h. So uh, nothing fancy, we just plug in uh, the value of different x into the, the function itself. So now this becomes still h equals zero. Then through some manip manipulation, we can say it's gonna be four h over h, right? So now things becomes clear, you can just cancel h out, right? So this becomes four. So because I uh, can just simply say it's still h goes to zero, but since four is a constant, then it's, um, it's, it's four, right? So it's four is because this value is actually connects to, to this value here, and uh, this is not a coincidence. So because this is exactly the slope of the function, and uh, uh, what is the slope of a function? The definition is this one. So right. So uh, what if uh, 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 so if it's this function, then what if x goes, uh, go, grows a bit, then how much does uh, y grows? So this is sort of a sensitivity uh, in terms of growth of function y at this particular point x, which is x equals to c. Uh, or or uh, uh, c, and then gauge goes to zero, right? So we're going to talk more about the, the slope or the, the first derivative of the function uh, in, in later lectures. Uh, all right, so I think that's it for this uh, part, and, um, and I'll see you in the next part of this lecture. Thank you.